one disagreement and we'll write them off the rest of our life. We'll hold a grudge. Listen, we forget about the years and years of friendship. We forget about the years and years of praying together. We forget about the years and years of, of weeping together. We forget about the years and years of working together. And we come up to this one thing in the present and we say, Oh, because of this one thing, I'm breaking off with you forever. We hold the grudge. Well, Job wasn't that way, evidently. He said, God, you've given me favor. How has he given you favor, Job? Oh, he made me one of the wealthiest men in the East. But Job, you've lost it all. But I had it at one time. God gave me that. I didn't even deserve it then. I, he gave me ten children. But Job, he just took every one of them. Oh, but just for a little while, I'll get to see them again. Hey, he gave me a good wife. Joe, what? She told you to curse God and die, but she hadn't left me. She loves me right in the, in the midst of all my trials. She's sticking with me. Oh, he's, gave, he's given me these friends. Joe, you're talking about the friends that stared at you for three days? And that when they did open their mouth, they began to say, Hey, Job, you must be a wicked sinner for this to be happening to you. He said, Yeah, I'm talking about them. Joe, they're not your friends. Oh, yeah, they were for years. They've been my friends. God gave me good friends. And he's given me so much to thank you. God showed me favor. Job, you have none of these things. Oh, I've had good health. But Job, you don't have good health now. But I did have it. And when I had it, it was God that gave it to me. God that showed me that favor. He said, look, I'm not going to forget all the good God did because of the trials I'm going through now. Job said to his wife, should we accept good at God's hand and not evil? You mean we should, well, I mean, when the good things come, praise God, and when the bad things come, oh, turn from God? No. The gods have shown me favor in the midst of all this. Let me ask you something. How has God shown you favor in the course of your life? Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through right now. No, and I probably don't. I probably wouldn't understand. If I've not gone through it before, I understand that I may not understand. But I do know this, that you're still breathing tonight. And you're not laid up in the hospital tonight. And I know that if you may be going through something now, God's been good to you in the past. And by the way, he's still being good to you now. This one fellow back at a... Uh, in Charlotte, many times, not all the time, but many times, we would have two church services on Sunday night or Wednesday night. We'd have two church services. We'd have a regular service, and then we would have church again. Not so much a service, but we'd have church again at Dairy Queen. We'd all meet. A called-out assembly into the Dairy Queen. Getting there, they had, uh, I would always get the chicken strip plate with that white milk gravy. Oh, Yes. Get a, a Hawaiian blizzard. My wife liked those uh, dipped, what was it, uh, caramel dip? She had a butterscotch dip, cones. And, and, and we would meet over there, and man, just thinking about that, totally I've lost track of what I was going to say. Just thinking about the ice cream. Amen. Have you ever said amen before, Brother Barry? <laughs> Listen, God, he's shown us his favor. I'll think about it in a little bit once I get my mind off the ice cream and the chicken strips and all that. How has God displayed his favor towards you in your life? How? He has. Don't minimize the blessings while magnifying the trials. But, Pastor, these trials are here now. Well, I know that. So is God. Even in the midst of the trials, he's watching after us. Even in the midst of the trials, if we'll just say, okay, God, I yield to you, I, I, I surrender to you, I'm going to stick with you, I'm going to be faithful, God, then he uses those trials to strengthen us. He uses those trials to mold us. How about with your help? You know, we can always find something negative to, to harp on, can't we? You ever slept on your neck wrong or on your back or on your arm wrong? I, I think this afternoon, I, I don't know how. I think I slept on my thumb wrong. 
How did you, I don't know. I was asleep. I'll, I'll, on a Sunday afternoon, I like to lay in the floor and go to sleep. So if I lay in the bed, I'll be gone. You won't find me here at night. I'll be asleep through it. So I lay in the floor. I'll sleep about 30 minutes or an hour or so. And, and I get, I don't know what I did. I don't know if I was sleeping like this or I don't know. But I got up and man, this right here, it, it was kind of, looked like a chicken foot. And it was numb. And it hurt. I, I, I couldn't move it. And I sat up and I, I started having to massage it and rub it out. It was still a little bit sore. Thank you. That's what I was. That's what I was seeking right there. That sympathy. It's still a little sore. Oh, okay. You can stop now. You're embarrassing me. Look, I could go around the rest of the night saying this is still sore. Okay, I even got Brother Thomas to help me out there. But hey, look, the rest of me's fine. Well, except for my left knee and my right shoulder and my right big toe and, and, this, and this spot on the side of my nose. But other than that, I'm in perfect shape. Yeah, you're not kidding, brother. Yeah, 43. If 43 is any picture of the rest of my life, this 44 is going to be tough on me. Now, look, here, here's what I'm pointing out, though. We just magnify what's wrong instead of magnifying God. God is good when? That's right, say it with me. God is good. He's good all the time. Uh, even in the bad times, yes, God is still good. Because God is still trying to work and he still wants to show himself strong and, and he's going to show himself strong once again in Job's life. Job's saying this, God, you gave me life. You've given me favor. God, you brought me through things in the past. Now that I'm in this valley, I'm sure you're going to bring me through again. It's what God uses to strengthen our faith. It's how he leads us through the tough times. Then he says this, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. God, I couldn't have made it had you not come and visited me. God, I would have given up had you not visited me. That sounds to me like God was visiting him. Even in the midst of the hard times, the presence of God was there. God, I was weak. Oh, but you visited me. God, I, 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 I was confused, but you visited me, and that preserved me. God, I felt lost in this world. I didn't know which way to turn, but oh, your presence was right there with me. I love Hebrews 13, 5, that last part where he says, For he had said, or I'll let me read the whole thing, Let that, your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So be content with what you have because in what you have or don't have, you do have this, you got me. I'm faithful, just like Brother Perry sang this morning. He's been faithful, faithful to me. Oh, my goodness. I love Psalm 46, 1, where he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Very present. He's not just present. I mean, he's very present. He's right there with us. Like Psalm 23, 4, where he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hey, if you have your Bibles, turn real quick. I want you to read a chapter with me. Uh, almost a whole chapter. Psalm 139. Let's turn to Psalm 139. Listen to this here. This is a, a good chapter, and we'll be just about done. And I would say we'd go to Dairy Queen, but there's not one in Mount Olive. <laughs> one in Clinton. <laughs> George, ready to go. Read along, I'll read out loud. You read along silently with me here. We'll read about the whole thing. O oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. 
for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Oh, do you, now look up here for just, you ever thought about that verse? He said you've, you've beset me behind and before, like I've got you surrounded here, and then you've put your hand on top of me. He's, I've got you covered, is what he's saying. What verse am I on? See, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He said, hey, but when I was just first conceived, you knew me, you covered me, you watched after me, you had a plan for me even then. What a great God we serve. I thank God tonight that he's given me life and that more abundantly because he's given me eternal life. He's shown me his favor. Well, pastor, what did you do to deserve that? I didn't do anything to deserve it. Remember, grace. I didn't deserve it. He's shown me his favor. He's given me this wonderful wife, five, five wonderful kids, not perfect, but five kids. He, he called me to preach. I, I don't know why sometimes I think, Lord, why, I don't know why you did this, Lord. I don't know. Why. He, he led me here to pastor. I feel like the most blessed man in the world being led here to pastor. I don't know why he did it to you. I apologize that God did that to you. You, you must have been wicked wicked people for him to punish you this way yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> praise the lord sister so i don't know if it's he sent me here because y'all needed me or because we needed you it may have been both he showed me his favor i thank god tonight that i know his presence he's with me once again, I don't deserve that. But he's with me. He said he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And listen, if anybody in this world deserves for, for, to have their back turned on them, have a back turned on them, I deserve for God to just turn his back on me and strike me down. But he hasn't. By the way, he won't do that with you either. Even Sometimes he'll have to whoop you, but even in that whooping, he never turns his back on you. My boys, there's been times I've had to spank them. Never turned my back on them. There's been times they've broken my heart. But I'm not going to turn my back on them. My boys. There have been times I've been disappointed and let down pretty hard. But I can't turn my back on them. You know why? Because my father, my heavenly father, never turned his back on me. Hey, folks, I don't know what it is in your life that, you, that you're focused on right now, what negative. May, hey, a lot of times it's something in our past, isn't it? A lot of times we'll hold on to one little spot in our past, and that thing from our past will define our whole life. Job said, yeah, a lot of bad's happened to me, but hey, he, he gave me life and favor. and He's preserved me by his visitation. He comes and visits with me. Job was not going to let his life be defined by the trial. God or Job was going to allow his life to be defined by his God. Folks, tonight, let's magnify God with our lives. Let's sing praises to him. Let's bless his name. And let's let what defines our life, let's let it be our God, not our trials. Bow your head and close your eyes.